Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit <clears throat> Break the Cycle website. That website presents eight self improvement lessons that come from all that, that I've learned from 31 years as a uh, professional family systems therapist and seven decades of observing us critters at work, us humans. I've studied communication between people for 40 some years. And over those years, uh, I have observed and been taught uh, that there are many reasons that block effective communication between people. Uh, can you define effective communication? My proposal is that it takes place only when each person, at the end of it, each person feels they got their needs met well enough in a way that felt good enough to them. That's my definition of effective communication. You may have a different one. As you know, there are lots of things that can get in the way of effective communication. Um, before I outline 12 or 13 of these, uh, let me just define what do I mean by communication process. Uh, the process, which is invisible and goes on every time you are with another person over the phone, in person, in contact, not in contact, communication process is a combination of what's going on in me, my thoughts, my feelings, my needs, my behavior, what's going on in you, your thoughts, feelings, needs, behavior, perceptions, and what's going on between us and around us. Those four things together constitute your communication process. A lot is going on, even in casual interactions with people. I wonder if you'd agree that most people are not trained to be aware of these four zones of, of um, actions. The fundamental thing you need to, in order to spot and reduce communication blocks is awareness. It's the first of seven skills you'll find in lesson two in my nonprofit website, which is all about effective communication. There are seven skills. The keystone skill that you can cultivate is awareness. So, if you have difficulty communicating from time to time or regularly, some of the blocks I'm about to describe for you may be causing the difficulty or contributing. So, uh, commit to trying to improve your awareness of the things that I'm about to describe. The first major communication block, to repeat what I just said, is lack of awareness in you or your communication partner. If either one or both of you are not aware of what's going on inside you, between you, and around you, that will probably hinder, may not block, but it will hinder the effectiveness, the quality of your communication pr process. The second invisible block that many people have and don't know about is your attitude towards your partner and his or her attitude about yours. There are three options. One is, my attitude about you is, my needs, my opinions, and my dignity and worth are greater than yours. I'm one up. The second option is, I'm one down. My opinions, my needs, my observations, uh, my worth are less than yours. I'm inferior to you. The third of three options is the best, which is, here and now, I see you and me and our respective needs as being equally valid and important, even if we disagree. So what I'm saying is a barrier to effective communication that's invisible and often people aren't aware of it um, is the attitude that each person has about the other person. 
This gets broadcast by our face, our voice tones, and our words without our knowing it. So, be aware of your awareness. Be aware of what I call your R messages, respect messages. Do you respect your partner equally, less, or more than you? <clears throat> and how does your partner feel about that with you? Another real common, uh, easy to spot communication barrier is interruptions. Can you think of anybody right now that annoys you or frustrates you because they interrupt you at times or often? There are two reasons for interruptions in communication. One is, it's a signal from person B and person A is talking on and on and on and person B has not got a chance to respond. Um, person A may be doing a communication block called flooding, which is talking on and on and on repetitively without being aware of what the other person is thinking or feeling or needing. That's called flooding. Some people call it monologuing. That can cause a partner who's frustrated to interrupt. So interruptions may be a useful signal or they can uh, say, oh, partner B, the one who does the interrupting, feels their need to talk is higher than person A's need to talk. They, person B, is sending a I'm one up respect message to person A, which usually results in irritation, frustration, hurt, um, defensiveness, guilt, shame, anger. It degrades the quality of communication and, if it's repeated, degrades your relationship. So interrupting is a major common block. Do you, do, do you interrupt other people? How do you know? Another major common epidemic, in my judgment as a family therapist who's worked with a lot of couples, another epidemic problem is <clears throat> when there is a conflict, Typical people, adults and children, children and children, adults and adults, don't know how to problem solve. What they do instead, what you may do, is fight, argue, debate, explain, excuse, whine, lecture, avoid, imply, control, manipulate, name call, blow up, walk away, every one of these is a lose-lose communication strategy and indicates that probably both people do not know how to problem solve. Problem solving is the seventh learnable skill in lesson two on my website. See the video that describes overview the several steps that it takes to do effective win-win problem solving. If you're not doing problem solving when you're conflicted with your partner, that's a barrier. Uh, the last need that I'm going to uh, mention in part one of these two related videos, the last barrier occurs again when people don't have awareness of what each uh, partner needs in terms of their communication. We communicate in order to fill two to five needs. If you can't name them, you're not aware of them. If your partner can't name them, she or he is not aware of them. If either or both of you are not aware of what you need when you're communicating in important situations, not casual, ho-hum, you know, did you see the ball game last night? But if you're talking about something that really is significant relative to your self-esteem, your relationship, your finances, your security, your children, <clears throat> it's good to know why are you communicating and why is your partner communicating. Once you know that, then you can use the skill of awareness to say, hmm, 
Does your need match my need? Communication needs may match or they may conflict. Here's an example. You want to cause action. You want your communication partner to do something. Uh, stop smoking. Um, stop interrupting. Uh, have better eye contact. You want them to start or stop something. You want action. That's the reason you're communicating. Your partner wants to vent. Your partner needs you to listen respectfully to what they have to say and accept what they say without question, without comment, without fixing them. So you need action. Your partner needs to vent. Your needs don't match. That there are several combinations of the five communication needs that don't mesh. If you need to vent and the other person needs to vent, does not match. If you need to vent and the other person needs information, that is a match. So, be aware of your needs and important communication, your communication needs, and your partner's needs, and see if they mesh or not. If they don't, use the seven skills you can learn in <coughs> lesson two to problem solve <clears throat> to see how you can each get your needs met well enough. Let me pause here. I just threw a lot of information at you. <clears throat> Notice what you're thinking and feeling right now. Just a quick summary. The blocks that I mentioned here are no awareness of what's going on in and between you two, no awareness of your attitude about yourself and your partner, interrupting one or the other or both of you interrupts the other, flooding giving too much information without letting the other person respond in some way, no problem solving, and your needs don't match. Would you agree that any one of these or several together would tend to hinder or block effective communication? I hope you have the stamina to go through the second of two videos, which is a set of even more common ways that average people um, interfere with their desire to get their communications met. Uh, watch part two after this.